Hi, welcome behind the badge. I'm Chief Alan Rodbell of the Scottsdale Police Department with you in this Chris Basal, our community liaison. Hi, How I mean, I should have brought my, remember that one time I brought my little Santa hat? And I had a red nose on it one yeah. time. Yeah. Yeah, I do, I missed that. No, we're getting old now. <laughs> I can't remember where we put them. Yeah, we, we probably <laughs> yeah. can't. <laughs> can't find them. Hi, everybody. So here it is, holiday season. We yeah. always talk about this, how quick it gets here. We talk about this all the time, how quickly school wet closes, how quickly it opens. It's, you know, life goes by so fast. <laughs> I haven't paid off Christmas last year. That was my last year joke. It's I still know. true this year. It is uh, true. It's, it's just the way it is. But we're here at the holiday season. And again, we want to tell everybody, have a great and joyous holiday season, regardless Absolutely. of how you celebrate your holiday. Yes. What Festivus, right? But however you celebrate your holiday, I uh, hope it's a safe and enjoyable one. Family's coming in. Lots of cars on the road, lots mm -hmm. of activities, lots of parties. Please be careful. Yep. Get a designated driver. Use one of the services. Uh, take 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 Valley Metro any way you get it there. Right, especially uh, if just, you're going to partake careful. in the festivities. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. With alcohol. Yeah. Let's so. all get through the season safely. And have no family fights this year. Let's wish pray that no family fights. That's usually what I get for Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> anyway, anyway uh, so uh, yeah, that'll be a newspaper article. Yeah. So, so um, yeah, along with that, um, Just be safe. You, just be safe. Okay. And don't forget, like, if you're, like, remember, we always talk about even at shopping malls to make sure you're watching when you're going to yes. your car. It, it is definitely um, an, an, a crime of opportunity. Um, so just pay attention to surroundings. Don't leave packages in the car and, and things like that. I know you're so frazzled. Everybody's shopping, buying stuff, running around. And it's just kind of pay attention to your surroundings. So yeah. we need to talk about that as well. Yeah, that's great advice. And I think for years we were doing this program at Christmas time and we act in the holiday time. And we actually would do a crime prevention kind of right. conversation. So it's always right. a great reminder just to pay attention as quickly as you're running from one place to another with the agendas that you have to get through for the evening. Right. Uh, just know where you're at and, and who's around you. So much going on in the wrapping and getting the tree and the whole bit but just pay attention to your surroundings and and don't leave packages or purses and we know that mm. happens yep. uh, and other things in the car and don't bury the, the kids in the wrapping paper yeah. either. So <laughs> my son learned how to walk actually on Christmas Day he was turning one in that January of that year he literally for survival stood up and started walking. It was like, okay, we, we, he knew that I got to get out of this. <laughs> I mean, it's either now or never. <laughs> yeah, so it's actually a prequel story. That's now awesome. that's 37 years ago. Holy okay, moly. Okay, so uh, we're going to talk today about internal yeah. affairs function. And one of the reasons I, I, I really like talking about this is because people do have a concept when you talk about internal affairs uh, based upon what they've seen on television or movies. And, 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 the, and the reality is people don't fully understand the purpose of the internal affairs unit in a police department mm -hmm. and, and because of that many people are suspect that you know police are investigating themselves how could they mm -hmm. you know how, how could they do that you know mm -hmm. effectively and efficiently and are they ever going to you know get to the you know get to the truth or deal with the real issue or if they with? get to the truth are they going to do something about yeah. it i mean there's a lot of questions especially when you see you know richard garrett andy garcia oh my god now you are yeah. dating yourself internal that's a, affairs that's a, go watch that movie it, it's a movie from like 1910 but that's just a, <laughs> it's probably in black and white but that's it's, it's, it's a si silent like movie <laughs> but anyway uh so uh but, but 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 the point I'm trying to make is on top of that uh, is the fact that and then that movie does kind of like change a little bit of your opinion in the wrong direction. In internal yeah, affairs. Yeah, we don't want internal don't, affairs. Don't make joke. Yeah, internal affairs is really looks at policies and policy violations. Yes. You know, when we're investigating or we're going to investigate an officer for an allegation of criminal behavior, or then we have well or criminal policy. behavior, but no, no criminal behavior. We're going to have criminal investigators doing that. Internal affairs really works directly to the officer chief to look at violations of policy, policy. and and making sure that that officers are doing doing the right things and abiding by the policy. Regardless, we're talking about courtesy on one level, all the way up to an excessive use of force on another level. You know, we are looking at the policy. So we have two gentlemen with us today. Yes. That are that are special are, are, sergeants. Our supervisors in the Internal Affairs Unit. Mm -hmm. our, this is our entire unit here today. I hope nothing <laughs> happens anywhere else. Yes, exactly. Right? But we wanted that we wanted to highlight uh, this part of the program, this part of the year, to kind of talk about what people can expect if they call in and make a complaint mm -hmm. about the police and department. And how to do that. And how to do that. Mm -hmm. And then what what can they expect when that happens? And then at the same time. They also handle the, the good stuff. I mean, when, when uh, accommodations come in or record opportunities for to reward and recognize our employees, uh, we, we handle that through internal affairs right, as well. Right, they're the, the, the award committee, so they do all that stuff with valor and, and, and our you know meritorious service and all those other things. They yeah. are in, in involved in that as well. So yeah. the, the, good, the yin and the yang. Yes. So, so today with joining us is Sergeant Joel Lewis. 
and uh, I'll ask you guys in a minute to kind of explain a little bit about your background. Sure, okay? sure. And George Golahair, who I think probably is our, how long have you been there now, George? Almost six months. Oh, oh wow, time does go by fast. See? Yeah. I would have thought months. it was like just really recent. Like a but, month. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> yeah. but time just went by that quick. Joel, you've been with us how long? It's, uh, it's coming up on 18 years in May. 18 years, but not Total. in the unit. Yeah, right. thank you. How long have you been in the Internal Affairs? Uh, two years in April, okay. so. Yeah. So tell us a little about your background then. So, yeah, I, um, I started out as a patrol officer like everybody does, um, and then went to financial crimes, eventually promoted sergeant, became the financial crimes manager, and then went to the criminal intelligence unit as their uh, supervisor, and, um, and then on to internal affairs, which I'm enjoying. Tremendously. But, and you had some other specialty assignments, did you not, you along the SWAT way? Maybe, SWAT, right? right? No, I didn't oh, do SWAT. I was okay. a, a pencil and paper guy. I, okay. I did, but with the criminal intelligence unit, that's in the special investigation section. Okay. okay. So I did that as a detective and as their supervisor, just like financial crimes. I was a fraud detective and okay. then I became their supervisor. And, and we've highlighted those sections of foreign. You were yes, a guest. Uh, you any idea how long ago that was? In a while. Oh, four years ago. Yeah. So, yeah. so we, we, yeah. we've had opportunity to talk about financial yeah, crimes Yeah, because that's here. like really important. We like, and you guys, financial crimes come through Citizens Academy as well to teach people right. how not to become victims of, of fraud. So it's very important, a very important unit. Oh, in this day and age, it's absolutely paramount. Mm -hmm. I mean, maybe in the old days before computers and internet, uh, you know, our victims were were pan were, not, were, were flim flam somehow on the street. Mm -hmm. You know that happened or pickpocketed on the street. And that had, but today, with identity theft, the way it's being, uh, it's occurring to almost breaches. all of us are, are, are somehow yeah the breaches. All of us oh, are subject yeah. to that. This it's a it's a big deal, mm -hmm. big issue today. And George, you've been you've been obviously with us for six months, as you mentioned. But sure. prior to that, what, what were your assignments? I've been with the department for a little over 19 years. Uh, I started off as patrol, as everybody else does, and then I did two years for uh, sex crime detective, and then a couple years in our violent crime detective, and then I moved to the criminal intelligence unit, like Joel was saying, and did about seven and a half years there before promoting, and then um, was a sergeant on the road, and then I recently, like I said, six months ago, came to internal affairs. So, what attracted you about this assignment? You know, just I, my entire career, most of my career has been in investigations as a detective and internal affairs. We investigate, investigate complaints, misconduct, and it's just a higher level of an investigation. And I just wanted to further my skills and kind of build upon the foundation of the investigation skills I had and just take it farther. You know, we've been very fortunate to see that, I guess, the 17 years I've been here, 16 as a chief, we've been very fortunate to have the just great quality employees that come into that section, our section of internal affairs. And there's a, and, and I actually, we require that. We've got to have the right people there because Absolutely. they are investigating complaints against other other employees. Mm -hmm. And it's important to get to the truth mm -hmm. and, and to deal with the behavior of its misconduct or, or, to, or to reinforce with the citizens that we are in fact watching and making sure things are done correctly. Sometimes it's a perception issue. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes it, both sides are, telling the truth, but it's a perception issue about what might be a violation of policy, and we can educate the public that way. And, all, and sometimes our employees need to have uh, a little bit of guidance and direction so they can get back into, mm -hmm. back, back into being the great employees they're capable of being. And yep. so basically, you know, depending on the severity of a mistake, it's not necessarily a doom or die, but uh, it can be a termination um, mm -hmm. if you violate a very high policy. So you, you also need those sergeants or the people that are in that office to have the respect of both yes. their peers as well and have a certain personality and a certain kind of um, way about them and have some credibility too because everybody has to be comfortable in that situation. Yeah. Um, otherwise, they won't have credibility. So, so tell us, guys. Tell us how someone that may have a, a complaint against a law enforcement officer or a, or a police employee, how do they go about reaching or getting the information in front of you? They, any number of ways, really. They can call, they can email, because we've got a, it's on the web that they can actually make a complaint there. Um, they can, it could be anonymous or they could request information back and talking back to them. They could, e they could even fax it if they want. We still have that capability, too. They could go to any supervisor anywhere and make a complaint. And whether it's anonymous or they want to give extra information, we will make sure, either George or myself, to reach out and contact them. So everybody gets contact, everybody gets talked to. Um, that's an important part of that. Um, so the communication, that back and forth, and their ability just to reach out anytime, anywhere, 
is what makes um, the citizens trust us in our job. So we'll go put some information up at the end of the program to kind of tell people how they can either get to the, get to the web, an email system, or a yeah. phone number. Right. But thank you for that. So, so I'm, a, I'm an employee. Someone has made a complaint. Uh, what, what do I expect? What's going to happen? Well, initially when a complaint comes to us, we will set up interviews. Um, usually the employee's chain of command all is aware of this complaint. And then we will come and just like any other investigation, we will interview everybody, all the parties involved, and if, determine if any policy violations have occurred or any misconduct. And then obviously we always inform the, the chief's office because we work directly for the office of the chief of, of anything that we find in our investigations. And in fact, uh, on Wednesdays when we have chief staff, uh, we meet with uh, representatives from HR, Human Resources, representatives from um, Risk Management, representatives from the city attorney's office, and the entire command staff. And we go over all the complaints that have come in over the course of the week. And, the, and, the, and we check the status of the ones that we've received previously to see where they are in the system and see how we're following up. And so uh, we, we monitor everything that comes in. On a, on a big scale, just to make sure we're handling them, they're getting through the process. And With citizens, a lot of eyes on it. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. And, and, and the number of reasons. One is we'll make sure we're consistent and fair. We will make sure we're treating all employees equally. We will, we will make sure we're treating employees right, but we also make sure we are responsive to our citizens who have taken the time to, to bring their concerns forward to us. And so there's a time period here, because sometimes we wonder, why does it take so long? I, I made a complaint. How, how, why would it take so long to get it, get it finished? There's actually a process that you go through in, in, during the investigation of a complaint. Yes, sir. There is, there's, and it's an, we have to have an initial fact-finding time trying to determine if, if this is something, if the allegation of misconduct is something that should be looked at by the employee's chain of command, or should it be formal, which meaning that it's going to deal with internal affairs. So it could, there's a couple different tracks with that. So there's some decision making, fact finding that goes on with that. What determines whether a sergeant would handle it, first line supervisor in the office would handle it, or we go up to internal affairs? What would what make the difference? Well, the big thing is the class of the investigation. There are three different classes of investigations for internal affairs. Three being things like uh, they missed court, or they were tardy, or perhaps they were uh, rude at a traffic stop. Um, that is because that can be immediately rectified and it's performance based. Um, that is generally handled by the chain of command. Now all of those can be handled by internal affairs, but the, it's best rectified and more quickly rectified by the employee's chain of command. We get it out to them and they can deal with it. Okay. And obviously the more serious ones are the ones being handled by your office. And what, give us some examples of what that would be. So. Uh, Class three are just kind of those those lower level things. Class two would be things like they failed to impound something. Um, a typical thing would they put a wallet on the hood of a car and they drove away and forgot to impound it. Um, that's the class two and class one. Minor, mm -hmm. minor improper procedures, things like that. They're doing something not necessarily exactly how the general orders guidelines to go by. They don't follow that exactly, something like that. And, and then class ones could be commission of a crime. Now, obviously the criminal detectives are going to deal with that, but it's against policy. It's misconduct. So we'll have a piece of that. So that's the highest level of the class one is you've got the excessive force, the commission of a crime, public corruption, things like that. Um, and we don't get a lot of those kinds of complaints in cases, no. th no. thankfully, but officers do use force. And when officers use force, it's always under review. And so I say always, there's this, this level force of, you know, verbal commands, you know, hands-on, but that aren't sure. necessarily investigated. But when you get to higher levels of, uh, it's documented, by the way, but not, isn't necessarily investigated by a criminal investigator. When you get to an officer-involved shooting, shooting mm -hmm. excess, uh, use, use of deadly force, that's going to have a whole different level of yeah. review right. and investigation. So you're not doing an investigation into an officer-involved shooting from a criminal aspect. Who's doing that? Usually it's our violent crime unit who handles the, any kind of shooting or homicides. Um, they will handle the criminal investigation. We'll normally come out at the beginning of those just to uh, offer the officers involved 
they sign the rights, so they're aware of the rights, and they're aware that there's going to be an investigation. So the criminal side handles their portion first. Once that's concluded, then we do our administrative investigation after that. So, so, so even if, on its face, everything we know at the time, it looks like it's okay. unfortunately, officer had to take the action that he or she had to take. Mm -hmm. Just we're still doing a criminal investigation. We do. We do criminal investigations on every officer involved shooting that we have, and as well as administrative investigations. And the difference it. between the criminal investigation is they, um, they have rights just like any citizen. But the IA investigation, they must, they they have to tell you everything that happened. Right? They're they're two separate things. I, that's always a little cloudy, even in Citizens Academy, that people don't quite understand that the criminal investigation and the policy investigation are two different things and there's two different standards for that, correct? Correct. In the criminal investigation, um, the officer, if they choose to, they could choose to talk or not talk to the criminal investigators. On the administrative side, in an investigation that we conduct, they're compelled to answer any of our questions. Because through it's the a Garrity. policy thing. So they could be cleared of, like, say, um, um, a, um, an incident where they had to use um, force, um, but they might have violated a policy. And then they, Correct. or it could be just vice versa, right? So it's two, I just want people to understand it's two separate investigations. Yeah. And so it's a higher level. I mean, you go through more steps than just like a citizen would go through. I don't think you could ever be responsible for use of excessive force and not violate a policy, too. You're right. You may, you may not have committed use of force right. to the extreme, but you, did, but you did violate a policy. Correct. But you could never commit a crime and not violate policy. Because Correct. Because policy says you can't commit a crime. Exactly. Right. Yeah. So, so just for clarification sake. Right. So, so I think this is important for citizens to understand because mm -hmm. they, you know, when we investigate this, we bifurcate the investigations and internal affairs doesn't really get involved while the criminal investigation is taking place because officers have the right same rights, Miranda rights, all citizens have. Right. But at the end of the investigation, internal affairs gets everything the criminal investigators everything, have put yeah, together. Correct. They get everything. And then they can ask questions that the officers are compelled to answer. Right. Even if they did something wrong, they have to tell the truth. And they don't tell the truth, that's cause for dismissal. Right, because that's a policy violation, that's correct? Right. Yes. Right. So that's what I meant by yeah. a policy violation. And the DA and everything is on the criminal side. but. I just wanted to maybe um, emphasize that so much because you know with all the things that have been in the news in the last mm -hmm. few years mm -hmm. of a lot of cases around the country that have been disputed um, by um, media and things like that I just want them to understand that you know there is a, a very intense way of looking at this it yes. isn't just like oh okay well, let's no policy about, but there's some there's a lot of review absolutely I mean, exactly. people think that you know we just shut it down, mm -hmm. cover it up, and right. deal with it. Right. But there's more review than just within the police department. So as you mentioned, the criminal investigation gets reviewed by the prosecutor's office, the county attorney's Correct. office. They come to the scene. They're there to make right. sure right. we're doing everything mm -hmm. right on the scene. Right. We give them the criminal case, and mm -hmm. they make a determination of whether or not it, 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 should, it should be it's a justified, lawful use of force Correct. under the Fourth Amendment of the Constitution, or if it's if it's not, and whether or not there should be criminal charges placed against the officer. Meanwhile, with internal affairs, that case also goes through a review process. The, if we're talking about a shooting or even an excessive, uh, excessive a, a use of force that results in a serious mm -hmm. injury or death, Correct. there's a whole review process that takes yes, place sir. with a review committee that looks not just at whether or not the incident occurred and whether it was justified, but tactics, training right. they look at all those aspects to say okay we could have done a better job even if actions were justified and okay we could have done something different perhaps mm -hmm. and so it goes through that review and we have a citizen on that board That's that right. represents right. citizens interest as well so it goes through many reviews it isn't That's just good. a matter of hey it happened and that's but, what I kind of wanted yeah, to just yeah, to get out right. because I think people have I know when people are in citizens academy you know they have so many questions about this because what they see on TV and what they hear with the media, they're not getting the full story. Sure. So basically, we just want to make sure that everybody understands that there is, I mean, like if you, like 
damage a car or something. You have to go through the whole review, like if you know, or yeah. just something. If, right. if, if a rock hits your windshield, you need to make sure you tell your supervisor. It needs to go through a chain. There are procedures and policies for everything. If you drop your coke or your, um, you know, drink in, in your computer or something, you have to tell somebody. You just can't wipe it up. I mean, there's right. policies and right. procedures for everything. And, and that's why I kind of wanted to get across. And to I the think, like with with the officer involved shootings, especially, I think like. Like you're talking about TV and, and shows, exactly. they solve everything in a 60-minute time. Right. These take months and yeah. months, and we yeah. don't finish our part of an officer involved shooting until sometimes six, eight months down the road. Yeah. And throughout that, so many eyes are looking at it and evaluating all the information. Right. So it takes a while. And, and if we had a reason to be concerned about our employees' behavior, we would we would probably take the employee out of the workforce. While, we're, while, we're, while the investigation is pending. As it is, when officers involved in a serious use of force, they're removed from the workplace that evening and they don't respond back to work until they've been cleared through a, through a psychologist uh, who just talks about uh, things that you can expect that might happen as a result of being right. involved in something so traumatic. Like, so that's like administrative leave. Right. And so, and so we take employees out of the workplace. Now, they'll come back to the workplace when everything's cleared and the case looks like on its face to be okay, and that is a justified use of force. But if, if there's any question at all, they'll stay out of the workforce while we get to the bottom of, of, uh, of everything. Mm -hmm and feel comfortable doing that. So right. there's a whole process here. Now, employees have rights even when they're compelled to make statements. So when they come in to see you, uh, they can have somebody with them? Yes, the Arizona Peace Officer Bill of Rights uh, delineates several rights that they have, as well as talking about the, how they're being compelled to talk to us. So they can have an observer there. And that observer can be an attorney or it can be anybody that they choose maybe from an organization, as long as it's not part of the investigation, that person is part of the investigation or their chain of command. They can have an observer and we encourage it. And one, one of the things also, I think, um, with our department, those Bill of Rights apply to sworn police officers, but we're one of the few departments, I think, that extend that right to all of our civilian employees yeah. as well. We feel very strongly that we should treat all employees fairly. We need to get to the bottom of the, of, of the matter, get to the truth, we need to deal effectively and, effi and efficiently with things that need to be identified and dealt with through discipline or, or training or whatever the decision is at the end of the day. But we, but we should treat everybody fairly, give everybody. And so why, it's not a game. We're not trying to trick anybody. You know, it's, it's not like television. It's not browbeating. Not we we want to hear the story of, from their viewpoint of what occurred. And sometimes they'll come right out and say, yeah, I messed this one up. I mean, I. I haven't had the pleasure of sitting across the table from you two gentlemen, but I, I, I've done a couple of things in my career where it's like, yeah, I messed up, and, I, and you pay the price. You, 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 you counseling or correction behavior. Yes, that was the next question. Yeah. What is the what is the um, discipline? How does it begin, and what goes from where to A to Z? What would be? Well, t typically uh, we have what they call progressive discipline, and it depends upon the nature of the allegation, how serious it is. Serious it is. So. Um, something simple, say for instance a preventable vehicle accident, being tardy to work or missing court, your first might just be verbal counseling. And that's all archived, we know exactly what's happening. And by the way, discipline is only given by the Chief of Police. So internal affairs has nothing to do with discipline other than archiving it so he knows what the discipline looks like. Um, so it, it can go anywhere from verbal discipline to to separation, to termination, and it depends upon the allegation, uh, the history of the officer or the employee, if they've had issues in the past, and hopefully we dealt with those through through that. So verbal letters of counseling would be the next one, then letter of reprimand, um, termination, uh, pay reduction, suspension, demotion, suspension. suspension, yes sir. Yep. Um, yeah. there's, there's plenty of things that the chief can decide from. Yeah. But I think what's important to, to know for the citizens is I don't have to go through that, through the level. No, sir. I can go right to dismissal, sure. termination, based upon the the actions the officer has either taken or, or not taken. That's right. Or, not employee, as or well. employee as well. It's not just sworn. Exactly. Right. So whatever the employee, whether the employee did something they shouldn't have done or didn't do something failed they should act. have done, right. failed right. to act, we can just say we're separating. And, and, and the motion, of course, I, I hold my supervisors accountable to make sure they're supervising and, and those that we feel that you know, just has, have, have disappointed us and not done the, the best job of supervision they could do, we, we think it's in the best interest of the organization and our community right. to, to 
put them back to a position they were successful at. You know, dismissed them. They're good employees, just not everybody's equipped to supervise or to lead. So, and what's the biggest no no? I love this answer, but what is the biggest no no for us? You mean us? You mean you and I? You mean you and I? We could never Line. ever do. Uh, lying. Yeah. Thank if, you. If you're if you lie, then it's... And why is that so important? Can you express why? Because people don't understand that. Well, I think as police officers, the community entrusts us with being honest and upfront because we're holding other people accountable and we need to have integrity and we need to be trustworthy with the community people. So if you're shown that you're lying, then that reflects so negatively on our department and we can't have that. And that's a termination. Yeah. But I do let people resign if they choose to resign. but. I will tell you that there's a there's a list that's kept by the county attorney for opportunities that you have to testify, and if your name is on that list of someone who has been found uh, guilty of an integrity issue violation, well then what ends up happening is they have to release that information to the defense attorney, and there's a whole debate about are you lying now because you lied before, right? And so for the most part, when you have to raise your hand and sometimes the only evidence you have is your testimony, it's critical. So. We don't have anybody in the city of Scottsdale Police Department, civilian or sworn, that is on that list that works here. Uh, and so we take that very, very seriously. Right. And I will tell you that that's, and, and that's a, something that um, everybody understands. Now, I'm also on the Arizona Post Board. I represent large cities. And on the Post Board, we review all the cases of terminations for law enforcement officers across the state. Mm -hmm. And we determine what, the, what the, um, the discipline will be at the post board level, which means we can remove an officer's certification. So he that's can't work license. anywhere else. That's mm -hmm. the license to practice law enforcement right. in the state of Arizona. Right. And so like doctors and attorneys and people that are licensed, we, when we take an officer's license away, mm -hmm. they can't be police officers anywhere in the state. Now they can try another state, but no state's gonna find out that they, they lost their license here. So this is, that's huge. And I think, I'm proud to say in Scottsdale PD, people know that going in. Uh, that any little lie, regardless of how silly, even, you know, I didn't pour the coke on the radio, but we, we know you did, and that will get you terminated. Absolutely. And people know that. So when they go in and they compel a statement, people say, yeah, you can compel a statement. What does that mean? People better tell you the truth when you compel a statement. Right. Yeah. And we know the answers before we ask, so you better not lie. You know? Yeah, exactly. And they don't. And, and I want to talk, you know, we got just a couple seconds left, but I just want statistically, what amazes me most, because I've been in this yeah, business this for important. a long time, been in this business 43 years almost, and I was even the director of internal affairs for a number of years back east. Uh, so I've been around police work for a while, a lot of police departments through the, through the years that I've been either associated with or had some contact with. Um, it's an amazing place in Scottsdale. We mm -hmm. just don't get the large number of complaints here that I've seen other places get. And that speaks to, uh, to the, the supervision, it speaks to the integrity and the professionalism of our personnel. Mm -hmm. And when we look at complaints and we see more complaints coming internally, complaining about each other, right. than externally, we know we're doing it right because we're cleaning up business internally before it impacts people externally. Thanks, guys, for being part really of our program. Really Thank appreciate you. it. Thank you for being here. Thank you. Hopefully, we just spelled a few myths. Don't watch TV. Hmm. Don't watch TV. I think, no I think we're on television. Maybe we're Not on true. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, guys. Hey, everybody. Happy holidays. And safe holidays. And we'll see you next year. Until then, take care. Thank you for being with us. Bye. Bye.